What is going on gamers and welcome back to the channel. Hey, in this video, I wanted to help give folks uh, some clarity on the chaos that is the Division 2 endgame experience. Uh, you know, uh, what is it that you'll be doing after level 30? Now, I'll avoid all main story spoilers in this video, but I'll try to explain clearly and concisely what you'll be doing after you beat the main story campaign and why. So the end game in Division 2 is pretty extensive, and the game does not hold your hand or give you a list of explanations or instructions. It just sort of drops you right into this uh, strange new experience and says, all right, get going. So uh, one of the first things you'll do is select a specialization, you know, at the White House Quartermaster after you reach level 30. You can pick a grenade launcher skill tree, a crossbow tree, or a sniper tree. And uh, each tree has a long list of unlockable perks. So pick the one that sounds most interesting and uh, you'll gain skill points as you continue through the end game. And you can swap any time here at the home base if you wanna try a different one. Okay, so let's dive into the end game. You uh, honestly, you may wanna even take notes, but I'll try to make this as simple and easy to understand as possible. So, all right, let's set the scene. You've hit level 30 and you finished the main campaign for division two. Uh, you cleared the whole DC map, and it all looks it looks nice and white again, uh, instead of that ominous red color, right? You've worked your way through all the strongholds. Now, instead of trying to run around the map and find activities like you might have done in a Far Cry game, instead, this ominous cutscene plays, and the whole map is totally red again, uh, with some even darker red things thrown onto it, and it's it's unsettling and a little overwhelming at first. And the level system that you've been adhering to up until this point, it's out the window. And your level is replaced with this number called your gear score. And this is the first thing that I want to tackle in this video. Now forget the map for a moment and all those new things that you see there. Just, just push that to the side. Let's focus on that gear score for a moment. Uh, this is the number one foundational aspect of the end game for you right now. Your goal is to gradually bring that gear score up higher and higher for the next several hours uh, of your gaming time. So that number is an average of the power levels of all your equipped gear at that moment. So each weapon and armor piece, it now has a gear score associated with it when you inspect the item. Um, so find the highest number for each slot and equip it. Your gear score will now show the average of all your best things. So the drops that you get out in the world, they will scale accordingly so that the majority of the drops that you find will be at or above your average gear score. Now, this is, this is important. The drops you get, they scale according to your best possible score, not the score of what you have equipped at that, at that time that you get the drop. So don't worry about having uh, your highest gear score on in a fight just because you're trying to get the best drops you can. Uh, you can drop your score and equip something that's maybe a little bit more relevant to the fight that you're in. Like if it's a ranged fight and you're like, well, I have a sniper rifle I'd love to use, but it's going to drop my gear score. Don't worry. Put the sniper on if you think it's better for that fight. The drops that you get in that fight won't be lower just because you equip something lower on. The game takes into account everything on your person, in your inventory, equipped and unequipped, and even the stuff in your stash as well. So, uh, all right. Now, the rest of the conversations that we have in this video, they'll sort of all circle back to that gear score. It's all connected. So let's take what we know now and go back to that map of DC. So it's all red again, right? Uh, which can be discouraging for those, uh, you know, completionist style gamers who love to clear everything on the map. And uh, you just dump dozens of hours into getting uh, the map nice and cleared. Uh, don't worry, clearing it up again is relatively quick. So a new faction has arrived on the scene in DC after you've cleaned up the streets for them. They're a former military contractor organization called the Black Tusk. And they're much different than the factions you've fought before. They have lots of tech, including mechs and drones, and even giant flying drones like helicopter gunship size that fly around, you know, the sky raining artillery down on the street. So uh, their grenadiers can even throw EMP grenades and disable all your abilities for a short time. They've invaded uh, former story missions and all the former strongholds as well. So your job, again, is to clear those strongholds basically at this point. So you'll notice uh, that you are now in a category called World Tier 1. 
By clearing all the strongholds, you're going to progress from World Tier 1 to World Tier 4. And Tier 4 is when like a new phase of the end game begins. So we'll get to that later. So, for now, you're World Tier 1, and each stronghold is going to launch you into a new World Tier when you complete it. So when that happens, the power levels of all the enemies go up. Now, if you hover over a stronghold, you'll notice that two red lines trace back from the stronghold to two missions that you previously did in the main campaign. These are now called invaded missions. It's basically a reprised version of the missions that you did in the campaign, but with a black tusk spin on them. Now, in order to unlock a stronghold, you have to first do the two corresponding invaded missions. Then the stronghold is available for you to complete, assuming your gear score meets the requirement listed on the stronghold itself. If your uh, gear score is not high enough, you'll have to raise it a bit to meet the requirements before you enter the stronghold. You can pick any order here. It doesn't matter. If you want to do the two invaded uh, missions in the west and then do the west stronghold, you can. If you'd rather start with the, the, uh, the mall stronghold and the two invaded missions there, you can. Or if you want to do the capitol building, you can. It doesn't matter. Just pick one. And the first uh, stronghold you complete will have a gear score requirement of 275 before you can start it. So once you complete it, uh, you will launch into World Tier 2. You will respawn at the White House, and a message will appear saying that the Black Tusk has reinforced themselves since you cleared one of their strongholds. So the next stronghold will now require a 325 gear score. After you clear that one, you'll launch into World Tier 3. It'll say Black Tusk has reinforced themselves since you cleared a second stronghold. And now the third one will escalate to a 375 gear score requirement. So these World Tiers, 1 through 4, they are very much a rinse and repeat sort of activity. You're going to do a few control points, do your two invaded missions, and then clear the stronghold and progress to the next World Tier. Then you do the same thing two more times, right? Until you clear all three strongholds and uh, progress, you'll, you'll progress to world tier four eventually, right? Now you may ask, okay, well, what's the easiest way to raise my gear score along the way here so I can get these strongholds knocked out? Uh, there are a lot of ways of raising your gear score during these world tier progressions. I mean, you can honestly get them by, uh, you can get by by simply doing a few control points looting the supply rooms, and then doing your invaded missions after that. Otherwise, you can check the vendors. They often have high gear score items uh, there that will give you a boost. You can even craft weapons and gear and hope for a high score to boost you up a little bit. You can do projects for the settlements and bounties from Otis at the White House. You can complete any of the random uh, events on the streets that pop up while you're just meandering around the city. You're literally going to be getting drops for days. So don't get married to any particular gear either because you're basically just going to be uh, cycling new gear in and throwing gear that you were using 20 minutes ago. You're going to be throwing it away. You could have even loved that gun, but you're probably going to be scrapping it because you're just going to be cycling up through these gear score levels uh, so quickly. And you're going to be getting new gear so fast. It, it do almost doesn't make sense to slow down and even mod your weapons. I mean, I do it anyways. But you can get by without modding your weapons all the way up to World Tier 4. Because you're just going to be getting new guns over and over and over and over and over again. Even like in the middle of a mission, I'm just throwing an, a, a, you know, a gun I was using. Just throwing it out and grabbing one off the ground and uh, progressing forward. So uh, doing this cycle of clearing control points and invaded missions and then a stronghold. And then... Control points, invader missions, stronghold, right? And one more time. This takes roughly five to seven hours, depending on your pace, to get to World Tier 4. It's not a ton of time investment in the long run. So once you've cleared the three strongholds, you'll progress to World Tier 4, and this is where you're much more free, okay? At this point, there's a new stronghold called the Tidal Basin in the south. As, uh, as of this time, it's not available to complete. And, uh, you know, we're just waiting for it to open up. In the meantime... Just enjoy World Tier 4 as a means of creating brand new builds and customizing your loadouts for any scenario, leveling up your specializations, find weapons and armor and perks that you like so that you can recalibrate later if you want to, stockpile on skill mods, 
Uh, you can also do a few neat activities at World Tier 4. You know, one of the coolest things that you can do at this point is amp up the difficulty of control points. Okay, control points get a little different here. And you can give yourself a shot at some much better gear because of it. So in order to do this, you have to patrol the area around the control point, complete random events in the streets, and this will escalate the difficulty of that control point. So do three random activities to take it to the maximum difficulty and then go clear it with some friends or solo if you want a real challenge, then reap the benefits of your hard work. At tier four, you're going to want to also complete your weekly and daily missions for loot. Uh, you can also start cranking out hard bounties from Otis. You can hunt down a character called the Snitch. It looks like Jimmy Buffett and uh, he'll give you intel on high value targets in the city uh, for you to chase down. His location changes though, so check just check the forums uh, and see where he is on that day that you're looking for him. And after you take out the high value target that he you know shares with you the location of, a gun runner named Cassie will appear on the map uh, with a marker for you to find her. And she has uh, an inventory, she has stock that refreshes regularly. Uh, I don't know how often it refreshes off the top of my head. But she'll sell you some tasty named items and uh, you have a shot at grabbing some of those as well. Also at World Tier 4, you can do things like farming for masks and farming for special keys, which we can cover in another video, uh, or you can already find this information online, I'm sure. You can also work towards collecting exotic weapons, which we can cover in another video as well, because there's a lot to do there. The bottom line is there's a lot to do. I mean a lot. So uh, good luck out there. I hope this video was helpful to you. Hopefully it helped you understand a bit better uh, what you can do and where to start. So let me know in the comments section if you found this helpful and feel free to add anything that I may have forgotten or overlooked. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Be well, agents. Hope to catch you out there in the field.